after I stabilized. He did tell me that uh, had I been late for another 20 minutes, uh, we would be talking a different story today. Uh, he didn't want to thank Dr. Gikonyo and his team of doctors and paramedics of the nurses. They have really taken very good care of me. And um, he would have wanted me to stay a bit longer for further observation. But I've requested that uh, he allows me to go home. And uh, he thinks I'm quite stable uh, to go home where uh, he can look after me for and from home. In any case, uh, my <coughs> home is not far away from here. And uh, if there is uh, any problem, I should be able to get back here. But as we speak, um, I'm OK, uh, a little bit weak, uh, but um, I feel better. Uh, the pain, the intense pain has gone away. What is there is very little pain. It is manageable for a man. A man must be able to start some of these small things. But uh, in his assessment, I'm out of danger. But when I came in, it was, uh, it was very, very, very severe. And uh, I want to thank the people of Kenya uh, for their prayers. And I'm sorry, many came to see me. I was not able to see them. The doctor could not allow them because I needed a lot of rest. And uh, I was at a very uh, serious observation by a team of doctors and uh, nurses. And therefore, I was not able to receive visitors. And I want to thank those who took their time to come and, uh, and, and, and visit me. Uh, Thousands, millions of Kenyans who have been praying for me for my quick recovery. I really do want to thank them and to say that I will remain forever indebted to them uh, for their concern, for their love, and uh, for wishing me quick recovery. Very mm. uh, unfortunate turn of events there uh, in that particular time. Um, even as you were receiving uh, treatment, uh, a lot was going on. Uh, in terms of uh, Senate proceedings, the outcome of that. There's also a very active, you know, uh, legal proceedings on the same, resuming on Tuesday. In the wake of all this, uh, even as the doctor has recommended that, you know, you, you have a sufficient rest, you know, at home, but uh, maybe just tell us, will we be seeing you active? Will you respond to all these issues that are going with me about a parliamentary outcome, what are talking about a legal process which is so intense that has even involved a three-judge bench, uh, what will be your reaction towards all this? I think for now my life comes first, my health comes first. It's unfortunate that when I was here in hospital, my brother and friend, President William Ruto, ordered for the withdrawal of my security from the hospital here. I've been here alone without a single officer looking after me. He ordered the withdrawal of security guards in my rural home in Nyeri, in my private home here in Karen. And all officers who are close to me were disarmed and given a warning that they should not be anywhere near me. I didn't know President William Ruto can be that vicious. I'm shocked by how vicious a man I helped to be president, a man that I believed in, a man that I was persecuted when supporting him, could so be so vicious against me when I'm literally fighting for my life in hospital. How cruel can a man be? You know? As we speak today, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, regarding Ashagwa, has no single security officer around him. He's alone. And um, I am aware that a judge seated in Kirogoya, another one seated in Midmani, gave conservatory orders, staying the proceedings of the Senate, which effectively means I'm Deputy President. But the President, in total violation of the court orders, viciously, 
with due security around me. Again, to cripple the functions of my office, he ordered through the head of public service, Felix Koske, that all officers in my office be sent on compulsory leave. Yes, last night, all vehicles assigned to officers who are gonna be were imported to cripple the office of the deputy president. I don't understand this level of viciousness to a man who have been your deputy, who helped you to become president, irrespective of whatever he has done. At his lowest moment in life, when he's literally struggling to stay alive, you unleash such viciousness against him. I bear no grudge against anybody, but uh, this had, had not seen that in President William Ruto. The man I'm seeing is the one is not the one that I thought that I knew. I know there was concerted effort that I should not go to Kuala for the celebration. Wilson Airport were told that I should not go through Wilson Airport. All owners of helicopters were told that I should not be allowed to use any of them to go to Kuala. I don't understand. But as I say, I want the people of Kenya to know that as I go home today, I have no security. And uh, it's good that they know. And if anything happens to me, all my family, President William Ruto must be held to account. We've made many mistakes in life. And we keep on learning. I trusted President William Ruto. The people of the region where I come from, the Mount Kenya region, trusted him. In fact, as we were preparing to go to office, nobody else trusted him. Msalia Mudavadi demanded that the Masa in an MOU with him, which they did. Moses Wetangula demanded that they, met, they must sign an MOU with him, which they did. Um, uh, Amazon Kingi demanded the same. Alfred Mutua, everybody else. I'm the only man who trusted him. Verbally, because we are Christians, we used to go to church together. And as a Christian, I believed a fellow Christian that he would never betray me or my people. For the last one year, it's been very difficult for me, but I'm a very persevering man, very enduring. And um, what happened on Thursday is a culmination of continuous persecution and stress for a year. And when I look at it, probably it is history repeating itself. But President William Ruto wanted to take me the route President Daniel Ramoy took Kenneth Matiba. He pushed Matiba up to getting a stroke and eventually dying. When I look to what the President is doing to me, especially now when I'm in hospital, crippling me, treating me like an animal, I think he wanted to take me the Matiba route. But God is gracious. It didn't happen that way. I hear many of his people are calling here asking whether I'm dead, whether I'll survive, whether I'll recover. They were celebrating. It's the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened in this country. That you can be so vicious to a man who helped you to be president. And the crime of this man, telling you the truth, don't evict people without compensation, Mr. President. Mr. President, don't overtax people. 
You are killing them. You are killing their businesses. Don't force a housing program on people. If people do not want these houses, don't force them. My only problem with the president is just being truthful because nobody else can tell him. The framers of the 2010 constitution wanted a deputy president who is elected. As a Baba, who can stand for the people. The charity we are being treated for, too, is get rid of an elected deputy president and appoint a control freak. A fellow you appoint who cannot ask a question, who cannot say anything. And I'm sure if they succeed, he'll be asked to sign an undated resignation.